First and four, Roger Stone is sentenced to prison. President Trump called the recommended punishment too harsh, setting off a Justice Department rebellion. Today, the judge weighed in. Ben. Karen, we've got plenty of sunshine out there, but why are the temperatures going in the other direction? We'll check that out coming up. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, Warren police say arrest warrants have been issued in the hazing case surrounding the De La Salle football team. According to police, five 18-year-olds are being charged as adults and two 16-year-olds are charged as minors, all with assault and battery. Jason Colthorpe in Warren this afternoon with reaction. Jason. Karen, these charges came about after two new victims came forward and they came forward after prosecutors thought this case was dead. Four months after a hazing incident at a team dinner, arrest warrants have been issued by the St. Clair County Prosecutor's Office. The Warren Police Department says it's for seven Warren De La Salle football players. Police say younger players were held down in the locker room and assaulted physically and also using a broomstick. The school conducted its own investigation and canceled the rest of its football season but were not helpful as Warren police got involved. Initially, uh, De La Salle uh, uh, really didn't uh, cooperate uh, as they should have as far as the administration. After the first investigation seemed to stall because of that lack of cooperation, two new victims came forward late last month. Um, the end results are that uh, we're sending the message as, as indicated, and the message is if you commit a crime, you're going to be held responsible, be it at De La Salle or anywhere else. Now, we were out at De La Salle High School today. Parents and students didn't want to talk, but the school did release a statement, and uh, it's lengthy. We'll have more of that coming up at 5, but the, uh, the gist of it is they have not been contacted by the prosecutor's office, but they will continue to cooperate with police. By the way, uh, the chief here expects those students to turn themselves in over the weekend and be arraigned early next week maybe Monday. We're live in Warren tonight. Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. All right, thank you, Jason. We'll see you again at 5. A Farmington Hills police officer is facing several charges connected to domestic violence. The victim in this case is a fellow officer. Officer Mario Vikic was arraigned in Warren's 37th District Court. He's accused of discharging a firearm out of a building, stalking and domestic assault on his girlfriend. A not guilty plea was entered on his behalf. We have reached out to Farmington Hills Police. They just told us Vikic has been put in unpaid leave pending further investigation. A Macomb County jail doctor accused of trading favors for sexual contact learned his sentence today. Last month, 54-year-old Stephen Cogswell was acquitted on five of six counts of second-degree criminal sexual conduct. He was found guilty on the remaining charge. In 2018, three women accused him of inappropriate touching during medical exams. Today, a judge sentenced him to five years probation with the first year spent in jail must also register as a sex offender. An indictment on fraud and bribery charges didn't stop Taylor Mayor Rick Solers from delivering his State of the City address. It was the Solers first address since the indictment last year. The mayor's home was raided by federal agents with $200,000 in cash seized. He's accused of steering real estate deals on foreclosed properties and then getting kickbacks in return. Solers has pleaded not guilty. A Rod Maloney caught up with Solers after the address, and you'll hear what the mayor told him new at 5. We have the DIA murals all around town, but today Detroit took a really big step forward with a new plan to support art in the city. Mayor Mike Duggan and the city's director of arts and culture, Rochelle Riley, announced the creation of the arts, culture, and entrepreneur office. As part of the plan for the neighborhood, art houses will be developed where artists and residents can use as a convenient space. The city will also conduct a Detroit artist census to assess how many creatives need support. Organizers say there's a high demand for arts in the city. This city has had so much else to do that it is not really focused enough on arts and culture. I think that arts and culture are as important as autos, are as important as mechanical design, as important as water. And I think once we do the artist census, we'll realize that most of the people in this city are connected to arts and culture. City has also announced the creation of a Detroit Arts Fund, and that's a program that accepts tax deductible donations to Detroit arts programs and treasures. 
Oh, once again, that sun is shining, but we are still shivering. I'm told there is a warm up in the future, but we're not there yet. Hey, Ben, what's the latest? And it seems like the more sun we get, the colder things become. And today's highs are coldest of the week and the nighttime lows even colder tonight than what we went through earlier this morning. At least it's bright. That's the flip side of it. Got tons of sunshine out there and that's going to continue uh, even right through the weekend. Current temperatures though only in the 20s entire area. Nobody's above freezing right now and compared to yesterday. This is about five to seven degrees colder than what we were looking at at 4 p.m. So it is going to be the coldest of the forecast tonight, but check this out by the weekend. We're going to be flirting with 50. We'll see if that's the warmest temperature we've got. And one after the other is we've got a very active pattern setting up for next week. More on that in just minutes. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. A longtime ally of, ally of President Trump will spend more than three years in prison for lying to Congress. Roger Stone was sentenced today for witness tampering and making false statements in that Russia investigation. It's a case that sparked a mini revolt at the Justice Department when President Trump got involved on Twitter. Devin Skillian is in the newsroom this afternoon with reaction to the sentencing. And Devin. there has been plenty of that. Karen Stone is the sixth Trump aide or advisor to be convicted of charges brought as part of the Robert Mueller investigation. Stone showed no emotion when the prison sentence of three years, four months was handed down this afternoon. He smiled but said nothing as he left the district court in Washington, D.C. He was charged with misleading the House Intelligence Committee in 2017 about his efforts to find out when WikiLeaks would be releasing the hacked emails from the Democratic Party. Stone was found guilty of all seven counts against him in November. Prosecutors initially asked for seven to nine years in prison, but President Trump criticized that recommendation on Twitter, calling it harsh. Attorney General William Barr retracted that uh, original sentencing request, and that caused a firestorm in the Justice Department. Four prosecutors withdrew from the case. Well, today, federal district judge Amy Berman Jackson said Stone's crimes demanded a significant time behind bars, but she said the original recommendation was excessive. The judge said, and here's the quote, he was not prosecuted, as some have complained, for standing up to the president. He was prosecuted for covering up for the president. In addition to the prison time, Stone faces a $20,000 fine and two years probation. President Trump just reacted to the sentencing. This very closely, and I want to see it play out to its fullest because Roger has a very good chance of exoneration, in my opinion. So you may be wondering why Stone was allowed to walk out of the courthouse. His attorneys are asking for a new trial. He doesn't have to report to prison until a judge rules on that. In the meantime, the battle over a possible pardon for Stone is already heating up. We've got more on that part of the story coming up on Local 4 News tonight at 5. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Devin. Still no verdict in the Harvey Weinstein trial on day three of jury deliberations. Jurors zeroed in on actress Annabella Shioru. Allegations she claimed Weinstein raped her in the mid-1990s. Weinstein maintains that any sexual contact was consensual. As far as we know, deliberations continue. If there is a verdict, we will definitely bring it to you. Now let's talk about the coronavirus. China has released some encouraging news, but we are also hearing about the first deaths of cruise passengers. Today, new cases in China are down with 394 reported. The decrease comes as China tweaked the reporting formula once again. Officials have been going door to door in Wuhan to get a better accounting. That is the city where the outbreak started. Two former passengers from the Diamond Princess cruise ship have now died. More than 600 people on that ship have gotten sick, the largest number outside of China. Here at home, we still don't have any confirmed cases in Michigan. Still ahead, millions of parents need to know about a possible choking hazard connected to a child's water bottle. We have the Help Me Hank alert. Also, the hottest app around is adding new controls that will make some parents more comfortable. And the IRS is planning to make hundreds of house calls on taxpayers. We'll tell you who's being targeted. We've got that story after the break.